Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. Let's open some boxes. If you've seen the goals video that I have for the new Ultralight design, the UWS Model 1, you'll remember that one of the goals is to have the airplane be quiet. One way to accomplish that is to have electric motors with a large prop that turns slow. With the current state of batteries, you don't get significant flight durations on electric motors. The Eagle is currently getting roughly an hour of flight. Well, one way to extend that duration is to be able to power down the motor. In order to be able to power down the motor, you need to have very little drag on the airplane. Now, drag is composed of several components, and one of those is drag due to surface roughness or irregularities. With wood and cloth, with tube and cloth, and with aluminum, you will have significant surface irregularities and roughness. With composites, you at least have the potential for very little surface irregularities and to have a very smooth surface. So for this airplane, I'm going to try composites, and in particular, carbon fiber composites. I have ordered supplies and equipment to help me start testing some carbon fiber composites. I have a Harbor Freight pretty close to where I live, so I've gone there to get some of my supplies. For example, these uh, gloves to uh, protect me from epoxy and other chemicals, very cheap. These scissors. Pretty handy. I went to a uh, forum in Oshkosh where uh, the general presenting the forum recommends that you have a different set of scissors for each type of fiber cloth that you're going to cut. The sizing that you have on carbon fiber, fiberglass are different and sometimes that they can have a funny interaction and start gumming up your scissors. So I'll have separate scissors for my carbon fiber and my fiberglass. As part of the testing, I'm going to be doing destructive tests on carbon fiber coupons, samples, and I'm going to uh, show you here in a few minutes some more items I got to do that, but one of the parts is going to be a chain that's going to be involved in doing some heavy duty pulling. I got that at Harbor Freight also. And to go along with chain, got some quick links. I also went to our local Michaels to get some more supplies. Another tip from the gentleman that was giving the uh, composite talks at Oshkosh recommended these metallic Sharpies. They're very good for marking on carbon fiber. They show up far better than a black Sharpie would. So we'll give those a try. Another thing I got from Michaels are these uh, craft sticks. We'll use those for mixing epoxy and I imagine some other chemicals. So they got a nice rounded edge. So you could use those in corners for filleting. I'm sure they'll come in handy. Now we'll get to some of the boxes that I've ordered. Uh, to go along with testing the coupons, carbon fiber and fiberglass, from Northern Tool I've ordered a hand hydraulic pump, 10 ton. Now, to go along with that pump, I also bought a hydraulic ram. So let's take a look at that. All right, this is a pull ram. It does not push. We'll have to use a spring or something to pull it back together but it's got these hooks so we at least put a chain on one end we'll probably have welded rebar in a hook shape at the other end 
and we will hook up our hand pump through here. Very good. I've got another item here that uh, I'll also be using for testing purposes. I bought a load cell up to 5,000 pounds tension here's the load cell there are some hooks going either end I can use my chain to hook up to these then it hooks up into this display. So I'll be able to read the uh, amount of tension that I'm putting on my test sample using that uh, pull cylinder. Alright, this is the vacuum pump that I've ordered. to help me with vacuum bagging and vacuum infusion. Now this is a uh, diaphragm pump instead of a uh, piston pump. And uh, I've heard that it's recommended that for vacuum pumps that are gonna run for many hours of time, which is what we will have because uh, sometimes these epoxies can take overnight to cure, that you pref it's preferable to not to have a piston pump. Uh, apparently piston pumps, when they run for many hours at a time, will start spitting out an oil smoke, or an oil mist. Of course, you don't want any oil mist getting on your composites because that will cause uh, separation problems at, in some future point. If you happen to get some of that oil mist in between layers on your composites while you're laying it up. So, that's why I got this uh, diaphragm pump. All right. I don't remember exactly what the rest of these boxes are for, but I'll grab one and we'll see what's in it. I have a box here from Aircraft Spruce that I ordered some equipment in, and I also believe I ordered uh, some supplies, so let's see what's in here. I intend to experiment with a number of fillers. For epoxy fillers. These are uh, 3M glass bubbles, one pound. Okay, this is the Aero Epoxy Resin PR2032. Now I've used this epoxy system back in the early 90s when I was playing with some composites. So since I'm familiar with it, we're going to start with that on our composites. Okay, this is another filler that I'll play with. This is usually used more as a thickening agent. This is Cabosil. This is a one gallon bag. Got some nice little squeegees for moving epoxy around on the composite. Okay, this is the Aero Epoxy PH3660 Epoxy Hardener. This is another uh, filler I'm interested in using from West Systems, the 410 Microlite Fairing Filler. I do have another box from Aircraft Spruce especially, so let's pop that up here real quick. All 
I have three pieces of PVC core material. Quarter inch, eighth inch, and three eighths inch. I bought these to do some experimenting with to see how well I like this PVC core material. This brand name is Divinacell H45 on the top one. H45 and the, all three of these are H45. So we'll play with these, do some coupon testing, see how well the shear load is in these, if it matches what the uh, expect from the specifications. We'll have some fun with that. Okay, we got two more boxes. These are from uh, Composite Envisions. A little bit of it is equipment and some of it's carbon fiber. All right, got some equipment here. This is a port for evacuating air from a bag, hooking the pump up to it. Connectors. There's a valve in here for shutting off and opening up the uh, vacuum. Got a little roller for rolling epoxy into mat material. Got some stirring sticks, which are basically just tongue depressors. Got a roller for rolling into corners. Let's pull that out. Sometimes it's difficult to get the carbon fiber or fiberglass to lay down into a corner. So this is a rounded roller for getting down into those corners. Okay, got a small roll of sticky tape. This is used to seal the edges of a vacuum bag so air won't leak into the bag while we're pulling a vacuum. Sticky on both sides. The gray there is the uh, actual tape. And this is some film release. We'll be using this film release to make sure that our composites do not stick to our molds. Okay, this is a hardener, an RDH 9302. This is a bonding and patching resin. If I remember correctly, I bought this as an adhesive to bond parts together. So we'll play around with that and see how good it is. Also, we have some uh, release wax, mold release wax. Typically, you'll put that down on your mold first and then put down the mold release film on top of that. Well, it's been a few days since the last segment of this video was recorded and I've received another package from Composite Envisions. Let's see what it has. Okay. All right, the first item here is something called fiber tack. Uh, this will be used to lightly tack down various layers of carbon fiber to the mold, uh, carbon fiber to carbon fiber, and peel ply to carbon fiber as we're laying it up dry to keep it from moving around. I'd also like to try this chemical release film instead of the PVA that you saw earlier in this video and uh, see how well this works. All right, we have some quarter inch hose here that I will use to uh, draw the vacuum out of the part. I also have some spiral round hose that we'll use for, during vacuum infusion to draw our epoxy resin into the part. How about a little bit of the equipment here? These are some barbed T-junctions so that I can do splits on my vacuum tube to spread it around to more than one part. Got some brass barbed fittings, quarter inch. Also bought a couple more valves. And here's kind of a nifty little device that you can use to cut off the uh, epoxy 
that is coming in on the vacuum infusion line, you run your tubing through here and then you tighten down this little vise and it cuts off the flow of your epoxy. Very nice. And that way you don't have to use a valve. I've also purchased a resin trap. Now this device is uh, placed in the vacuum line between your part and your vacuum pump. Any resin that accidentally gets into your vacuum line will come down into this trap and stay down in here and then you have your vacuum line going over to your pump. It also has a handy little vacuum gauge on here, has a valve, and they gave me a little bit of hose to use too. Now I considered building one of these myself, but just to save myself some time, uh, I decided to go ahead and buy one of these. Since this video is getting kind of long, I'm going to cut it off here. We'll give you a preview of what the next video is going to be for unboxing. I've gone ahead and unboxed a number of items that I've received, but I'll go into more detail of what they are, give some close-ups. But essentially, they are vacuum bagging materials and carbon fiber. I also have an order on the way with some more carbon fiber, with some fiberglass, and another new material that I have not used before. I just learned about a few weeks ago that's supposed to give a toughness to uh, whatever material it's mixed with. So we'll use that for leading edges, things like that. And we'll go over all this in the next unboxing video.